So you've saddled your colt. What do you do next? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how I start desensitizing them. Stay tuned. Okay, so this is the second saddling. And this is a different pad and a different saddle than what I was using before. Not that I don't value my previous saddle. Um, this one fits him a lot better, and this one's quite a bit more expensive. So it has a few more uh, bells and whistles on it, so I can use it to hang stuff off of him as I'm desensitizing him. So I went ahead and went with this saddle this time. Uh, I'm not too worried about him flipping over or throwing himself down on the ground with it on him. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just give him a little bit of a job here, send him over the ground poles a little bit, uh, get him moving around, remind him what it feels like, you know, real basic, basic stuff here before I start adding my buoys to him. Make sure that he's tracking around quietly, he's not evading the, the jumps there, the little ground poles, make sure he's facing up to me and I have his attention. You know, all of those little things that we have to double check and triple check every single time that we work with one. So first thing I'm going to do here is I throw the buoy down in front of him and let him smell it. Um, he's played with them before here in the round pen. Um, but I'd like to throw them on the ground just so he can see that uh, sometimes horses will attack those buoys. You'd be surprised. They, they'll stomp them with their feet, they'll go down to their knees, and they'll bite them. And so I just kind of want to make sure he's not going to do that before I get in this situation here where I'm trying to try the buoy up to the pommel of the saddle, and it gets him, and, and uh, you know, and then we're in a pretty, you know, predicament there, aren't we? So go ahead and put it on him. And now we can change the level of desensitization with this buoy by how long I allow it to hang off the pommel of the saddle. At this height right here, at this length of rope that it's tied to the pommel, it doesn't create as much of a distraction, okay? If I were to let that hang down further and let it really bump on his forearm, that's when it really causes a little bit of chaos and 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 it bothers them so I, I have it up high to start to you know kind of ease into it with him and as you've seen before in other videos usually when i have the buoy on the inside of the circle that they're making it doesn't tend to bother them it's when it's on the outside so now when i change direction here this is usually when we see a reaction, okay? And we don't hear just yet. He just keeps going on like, you know, business as usual. Give him a job. Send him around the on the ground poles. He's taking a lope nicely there on his own. He's taking the correct lead. That's really important to me too. This is all part of his balance, being able to handle himself in the round pen, handle himself over the ground poles, not obliterate him. And so he's going to go ahead and screw around and play a little bit. And I'm going to send him forward. Now, now I've decided, okay, that's enough of that. I do not let horses buck and play and screw around while in the tack. Absolutely 100% not acceptable. At one point I used to, and I still do sometimes because I want to see how bad it's going to be. I want to see how bad that buck is. Like, you know, most horses have a pattern and buck a certain way. That's why rodeo cowboys kind of know the stock that they're riding. You know, they know that that bull or that horse comes out and they turn a certain direction or they run down the middle of the arena before they start bucking. They all kind of have a pattern. So I'll, I'll let them buck initially to see what they're going to do and how bad it's going to be. But after that, you know, no, it is absolutely 100% not acceptable. Any sort of bucking, playing, screw around. This horse can kill me, okay? So he has to pay attention. He can't react 
to my equipment like that, okay? It's totally unacceptable. So I, I'd start changing directions with them right away when they do act like that and stop that behavior immediately, okay? So I switch sides here, go back to the other side, you know, after he gets quiet for me, and I'm going to go ahead and send him the other direction. Now, you want to be careful how you send them after you've attached the buoy or whatever piece of equipment you're attaching to them to send them around. You can use milk jugs for this for all I care. You can use a bag with soda cans in it. You know, you're, it's really limited by your own imagination. So the first time you send them out after you've put whatever on them to desensitize them, you kind of want to be out of their way because sometimes they jump and that first jump is right on top of you. So make sure you're in a position that when you send them, they're away from you and you're out of the direction that they want to go. It also goes back to a, your initial groundwork that they know to move their shoulders away from you and get out of your space. So this goes back to when I handled him as a weanling, his very first video of groundwork with a weanling. That stuff starts back then, okay? And so when I put this buoy on him, again, I start it with it on the inside of his circle. I don't start it with the outside and I try to give him a job here and give him something to do. And then he doesn't necessarily think about it right away and he kind of zoomies just a little bit and kind of screws off a little bit there as I ask him for that lope. That time he took it a lot smoother. I'm looking for smooth walk trot lope departures here, okay? It, it all goes together. If he can do a smooth trot and lope departure in the round pen with these distractions on him, he's going to be able to do it smoothly with me on his back. And now I'm going to change directions with him, send him around the other way. I'm not super critical about whether he goes over the ground poles or not. When I'm ready to put him over them, I ask him to go over them. He zooms past him a little bit, but the lope is nice. You know, he's not, um, he, he's not blasting into it right now. So this next time around, I'm going to force the issue. Okay, you're going to step over these. Here's your job. And he's like, oh, okay, I, you know. I get it. I, I can't get out of it this time. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and let him stop, face up to me, gather up my rope, and when I approach him, I always pet and rub on the head, and I'm going to go grab a second buoy. Now, even right in this very moment, as I lead him over to grab that second buoy, you have to be really careful right here too because there could be a jump and spook because now we're doing something a little bit different than just going around the round pen, right? So that buoy could possibly scare him again. And now I'm going to attach the other one. We've already introduced him to this side. And so I'm going to reattach this to this side. So now he's going to have the distraction on both sides. This is just like a person being on his back and both legs are touching him on both sides, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and send him around again with both of them banging on his shoulders now. Walk, trot, and lope, both directions. They have to go all three speeds. It does no good if all we do is walk or all we do is trot and we never break into a lope. We're going to have to do all three speeds. Because these horses, the thing of it is, is that we can do lots of stuff at a walk. We can do lots of stuff at a trot. But if we never go any faster, we don't know what their reaction is going to be at a faster speed. If we don't ever practice a stop from a lope, how are we going to make sure that we know our horse will stop at a lope? Make sense? So we got to get him moving, got to get his feet moving, give him a job. We've got the ground poles in here. If I thought he was the type of horse that would want to try to kill himself when I added these buoys, I probably wouldn't have the ground poles in here because the ground poles can make you have a wreck too. And so now here he goes wanting to screw off and play a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and stop him, change direction, send him the other way. Because now it doesn't necessarily matter if the buoys on the outside or not since we have both buoys on him. And I'm just going to give him a lot of work and make it really hard for him. Bunch of changes of direction. Now, you can't get away with this if you aren't in a round pen. 
you better have some weight behind you if you're going to do this outside of a round pen. I, I can kind of be brave and I can get away with it because I'm in this round pen. And even in this round pen, it's a 60 foot round pen. He still has a little bit of room to drag me a little bit. And, you know, in a 50 would probably be me, be more ideal for this particular type of work. But I, I need a 60 for what I do. And so, and so, you know, I can, I can afford to get a little aggressive with him and how I'm sending him. But I tell you what, if you tried to do this outside of the round pen and you have this wide open space, it probably wouldn't go so well, okay? So now I'm just looking for him to do this smoothly, you know, just go to work and, you know, not think about those buoys. Just walk, trot, lope. We need something really, you know, seamless, nice, easy departures, working all three gates you know, he's dealing with vehicles going by. He's dealing with the skid steer now going by. This is normal ranch life. He's going to have to deal with all sorts of different equipment, whether it's a four-wheeler or it's a great big tractor. Okay, and just keep right on working. Business as usual. They all have to deal with this at some point or another. And right now, I'm not truly asking him to go over these ground poles right now I'm looking for him to just smoothly go through the motions and make sure I have his attention send him back the other way asking for this lope speed up their feet this is what I preach speed up their feet and change directions it gets their mind right whether it's on the ground or it's on their back speed up their feet and change directions then you give them a job like going over those ground poles and they don't, ha they don't have a chance to think about these, this thing banging on his sides anymore. After this time of going over the poles, he about stops on his own there. See, I barely elevate my hand on this rope. He's got a really good feel on the line now. We got this really good lick and chew. He's really accepting of what I'm doing with him. I have his attention. He's allowing me to approach him and pet and rub all over him. Even now, as I take the buoys off of him, I'm going to throw the buoys down on the ground and let him look at him again. You kind of never know in this very beginning stages how they're going to react to things. So you always want to double check and triple check your work, okay? But I continue to just rub him all over, keep petting him, keep reassuring him, you know, keep on making this sort of relationship progress with him, uh, you know, because we're going to add more to it. We're going to we're going to make this job even more difficult and create even more distraction to make sure that we still have a willing, accepting individual here. So we're going to call it a day with this, you guys. And stay tuned. We're going to do this again next week. I sure appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And thanks for spending your time with me.